So just the last one. It, so if you guys oppose this law that bans classroom instruction about, about sexual orientation and gender identity in K through three, does White House support that kind of classroom instruction before kindergarten? Do you have examples of schools in uh, Florida that are teaching kindergartners about sex education? I'm just asking for the president. Well, I think that's a re I think that's a relevant question because I think this is a politically charged, uh, harsh law that is putting parents and LGBTQ plus kids in a very difficult, uh, a heartbreaking uh, circumstance. And so I actually think that's a pretty relevant question. Go ahead. Um, okay, so let's talk about the don't say gay bill, since Fox personalities like Peter Ducey seem insistent on ramming this issue down everyone's throats. Because even though in the last week, Democrats have passed bills lowering the cost of insulin and decriminalizing marijuana with almost zero support from Republicans, even though Democrats are focusing on real issues that will materially improve the lives of Americans, Republicans are hell-bent on attacking young gay kids and making sure they predicate their entire political identities on that. Because why improve our lives when you can just attack innocent children instead? And lest there be any doubt, that is what the Florida Don't Say Gay Bill does. The official name is the Parental Rights and Education Bill, and while Republicans swear up and down that this bill by no means prohibits saying gay, all you have to do is actually read the bill and you realize that, surprise, surprise, those people are lying. Lines 97 to 101 read, quote, Classroom instruction by school personnel or third parties on sexual orientation or gender identity may not occur in kindergarten through grade three or in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students in accordance with state standards. Now, while even Peter Ducey claims that this is an issue only for grades K through three, the actual language of the bill says kindergarten through grade three or in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate. In other words, not just K through three, but rather any age that anyone deems not appropriate. That language isn't an accident, it's intentional to give conservative hacks plausible deniability that it's only grades K through three, while in reality, ensuring that the bill itself would still allow them to target all ages. And beyond that, Republicans know that that vagueness of wording will have a chilling effect on teachers, so that they'll be too afraid to even mention the existence of LGBT issues in the classroom. The point of this law is to scare people into censoring their speech. And of course, of course, it comes from a party that falls over itself whining and complaining that their speech is being curtailed, only to turn around and threaten punishment on anyone who dares stray away from their political talking points. The projection would be hilarious if it wouldn't ruin the lives of innocent children. And let's be clear, that's what it'll do. When we're free to discuss LGBT issues, it eliminates the stigma that so often plagues these kids' lives. The more we're able to discuss this topic freely, the less stigmatized this topic will be. And for LGBT kids, that may very well mean the difference between acceptance and not. And moreover, in a demographic with such high suicide rates, the difference between life and death. These Republicans will invariably, undoubtedly cause more of those deaths. A price that they're happily willing to pay just because it supplies them with yet another scapegoat. And that's what Republican politics needs. People to be cast as villains. It is the politics of fear through and through. And finally, for those absolute morons who contend that this is some kind of a grooming bill, give me a break. Acknowledging the existence of LGBT Americans doesn't mean someone is grooming anyone for whatever depraved sexual activities these twisted people are cooking up. I will say that I find it so interesting that whenever Republicans need to defend themselves from any obviously backwards law or right-wing policy position, they just blindly cry pedophilia. And yet if Republicans were actually worried about pedophiles, they'd probably show a little concern about someone like Matt Gates, who is currently under investigation for child sex trafficking. They'd ask why Ted Cruz promised to support Roy Moore if he'd been elected to serve in the Senate from Alabama, despite the fact that he molested countless underage girls. They'd ask why Mike Huckabee said that Josh Duggar, who molested five underage girls, committed actions that were, quote, inexcusable, but not unforgivable. They'd ask why Jim Jordan allegedly turned a blind eye to hundreds of student athletes getting molested and raped at Ohio State University by a teen doctor while he was the coach. They'd ask about RNC strategist and Trump re-election campaign strategist Ruben Verastegui, who was arrested 
as part of a federal child sexual exploitation investigation. Or a former Kentucky judge and Trump delegate, Tim Nolan, who was charged with multiple human trafficking offenses and paid minors for sex. Or a Republican state senator and Trump's Oklahoma campaign chair, Ralph Shorty, who was convicted of child sex trafficking. Or Ben Gibson, a 2020 Republican congressional candidate from Louisiana who got arrested on four counts of pornography involving juveniles under the age of 13. Or a Trump Commerce Department official, Adam Hageman, who's accused of sharing a child pornography video and commenting several times on sexually abusing children. I mean, the list sure does seem to go on forever. And that's not to say that there aren't absolute creeps across the political spectrum, but it certainly does seem like the GOP and its activists are especially well represented for a party that keeps crying pedophilia and pointing to the left. Maybe, just maybe, we start treating these accusations as the projection that they seem to be. So instead of attacking LGBT kids who, much to the dismay of Republicans, will still exist regardless of their fucked up laws trying to undermine that reality, maybe the Republican Party should focus on cleaning up the perverts within its own ranks. Because these kids in Florida schools aren't the problem, it is the adults who can't manage to leave them alone who are. To see more videos like this, click the subscribe button right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work, subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. I cover the most important stories each week, and my guest is always one of the top political figures, including Vice President Kamala Harris, Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, Nancy Pelosi, Katie Porter, Cory Booker, and so many more. The podcast link is also right here on this screen, so give it a listen and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.